Lord. We have been talking about cooperating with the character of Christ. And that's what God is desiring us to do, is cooperate with his character. So by cooperating in his character, you've got to lose yours. See, you can't cooperate with God's character if you're still fighting with your own. Praise God. Now, tonight's teaching we're going to talk about. Now, last week we talked about cooperating with God's character. And the first thing that we needed to do was activate forgiveness. Amen? And there was a homework assignment given for last week. So make sure you do that and you hold on to it. Don't throw it away or don't do anything yet. All right? Hold on to it. Because you're going to get another one tonight. Praise God. Tonight we are going to talk about the birth of self, which is actually pride. The birth of self. The birthing of self. <clears throat> Would you turn to Isaiah 14, please? The birth of self. You know, the trinity of darkness is called me, myself, and I. Hallelujah. It just got warm in here, didn't it? Whew. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you. The birthing of self. The birth of self. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Is everybody okay? Are you ready? Thank God you brought your pads, your pens, your sword, because paper doesn't forget. And the, deal, the, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? And if you think you're going to leave this room and remember everything, you will not. But the Holy Spirit will bring things to remembrance, but you've got to get it in your spirit. Amen? So don't let pride tell you you know it all. Oh, hallelujah. He knows it all, though, doesn't he? Amen. Now, if we cooperate it, we're going to know it all, too. But you've got to cooperate. Amen? And Isaiah verse... Uh, chapter 14 and verse 12. Would you read it with me? How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Now this is prophetic and this is Isaiah expressing what happened in the throne room of God when Lucifer became prideful or birth or self was established. Now you remember, anybody ever say the word lucky? Hi, I'm lucky. Let me tell you where that word comes from. Lucifer. See, this is how the devil snares people by their words. See, you're no longer lucky. You're blessed. And even if you've been spoken that word, you need to repent for agreeing with that word because it brings a self-imposed curse on you. And you need to sever that and break that and loose yourself. Is everybody with me? The word lucky comes from the word Lucifer and it's a self-imposed curse. Hello? Remember, God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, aren't they? And what's Satan's greatest weapon? Deception. Why? He does not want you to know his tactics. He does not want you to know what snares you. He does not want you to know what ties the hands of God. And he does not want you to know what part of your life he's involved in. Hello? The Bible says that we are to make no provision or no place for the devil. So until you begin to get rid of the devil and shut the doors and learn how to keep them shut, you're going to have a roller coaster ride of your life. You will go up and down and all around. You'll go in the vicious cycle. You won't know what to do more 90% of the time. And you'll be tormented. And it's a terrible place to be. Especially if you called out for help from God and you said, I'm willing to do your will. Well, you just made a covenant with God when you said that. When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you made a covenant with God Almighty. You know what you said? I give you my life. So if you go do your will, you get cursed. You bring a curse on yourself. Does everybody understand that? When you made a covenant with God Almighty, He keeps His covenant. But He operates in an arena where if you do this, He'll do that. Amen. So what He wants to do is He wants us to learn how to cooperate with the character of Christ. Now, the word Christ means anointing. Now, we know that the anointing that is operating in us is changing us, isn't it? But there's a place where God wants you to learn how to operate in the anointing. Amen? And that's where you cooperate with Christ. As you're cooperating with the character of Christ, you are now beginning to operate in the anointing. And the first thing he said you need to do is forgive. If you've got any unforgiveness anywhere, it's an open door. If you hold any resentment anywhere, it's an open door. Hello? Okay. But we're talking about the birth of self tonight. Let's go. In verse 13. For you have said in your heart, come on, read it with me. 
I will ascend into heaven. Make sure you highlight the word I or circle it or something. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I, I, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. I will do it my way. The Frank Sinatra saying that. Hello, I did it my way. Oh, hallelujah. And Jesus said, hit the highway. <clears throat> hallelujah. In verse 15, and this is the response from the Lord. He said, since you uh, are going to do it your way there, Lucifer. Now, you got to remember something that Lucifer was one of the archangels of God. He was the highest ranking angel there was. Besides Gabriel and Michael, Lucifer was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He was the highest ranking angel there was. He was the right hand man of God. Does everybody understand this? Okay. <clears throat> Remember we talked about the closest one to you. Hello? <laughs> oh. And this is the Lord's response. Yes, you shall be brought down to Sheol, which means hell, to the lowest depths of the what? Pit. Now listen, this is where it was prophetically spoken. Now you got to understand that pro prophecy is not just future. It's revelation of past also. Come on, are you with me? It's revelation of past. Because when you are in the spirit, God tells you things that were, which are, and are to come. So even the word itself, you've got to, if you are led by the spirit of God and in the spirit, you will understand whether God is talking about something past, present, or future. And that's only determined by the Holy Ghost. So if there's no relationship or anointing in your life, you'll read that Bible just like a word or a book. And you will not get revelation the way you're supposed to. Amen. Here he talks about us, Isaiah tells us about what happened in the throne room of God where Lucifer was removed for too many eyes. Did you ever see when a batter gets up, you know what happens? Three strikes and he's out, right? Well, Lucifer had five strikes and he was out. Oop. One, two, three, four, five. So he had two extra. Amen. And he got thrown out of the throne room of God. Are you with me? Okay. Why? Because self was now birthed. Lucifer got his eyes on him, didn't he? Come on, are you with me? All right. Go to Ezekiel 28. This is where Lucifer and Isaiah birthed self. He denied God of, crea of the God of the creation, and he denied his position. Does everybody understand this? See, when you deny the Lord, you promote self, don't you? So when you choose to do your will, who do you promote? Self. And then you sing that song, you did it your way. <laughs> Ezekiel 28 and verse something. Uh, 11 or 12, it doesn't matter. Start at 12. <laughs> Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Now, he's not talking about the natural king. He's talking about a prince of palatine that is in the air over Tyre. Are you with me? Okay. Glory to God. Now, let's read this together. He said, You were the what? Seal of perfection. Now, we know that there was no man perfect, was there, except for Jesus. So we know he's not talking about some colonel king. You were full of what? Wisdom and perfect and beauty. Who do you think he's talking about? Lucifer. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Was Lucifer in the Eden of garden of God? Yes. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and diamond, braille, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. Why were, was he covered with all of these stones? Because he was the ruler of the earth. He was a praise and worship leader of the universe. The earth was inhabited with angels. They were called sons of God. He was there when the earth was created. The Bible says in Genesis 1.1 that in the beginning God created the heavens, meaning spirit realm. And then the earth, meaning natural realm. Okay? So all the heavenly hosts and all the things of the spirit realm were created first. Then God created the natural realm, the stars and everything else. So we see here, because Lucifer was the praise and worship leader, he was the ruler of the earth. The earth was known as the mountain of God of the universe at that period of time. It was called the original earth, or the perfect earth. 
It was perfect. Perfect. Is everybody with me? It was perfect. And Lucifer was dressed with timbrel, and you'll read this next if you'll read it with me. And the workmanship of your what? Timbrels and pipes were prepared for you on a day you were created. So you can see this very large angel, beautiful, with all kinds of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, with stones all over him. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe, where God breathed right through him, timbrels and pipes and so forth were established and attached to him. He was beautiful. And he was one of God's right-hand man. He was God's right-hand man. He said, you were the anointed cherub who covers, covers what? The universe with praise. He said, I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God, which was the earth. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. When was the fiery stones? The creation of the earth. He was there with God when the earth was being created. Oh, hallelujah. He said, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Now remember something. Self was birth. The iniquity was pride. Are you with me? The iniquity was pride. It's haughty. Pride. Now listen. He was a seal of perfection. He was perfect in holiness. He was a, a character of purpose. Hello? Of God's purpose. Amen? He was the expression of God in the arena of praise. He was the ruler of the universe. Of the um, earth god placed him there and then he began to eye himself self was birthed and then he associated with something called pride which was the iniquity iniquity or that area where pride protects self are you with me just come on say it pride protects self good <clears throat> pride that protects self was the first character of darkness. It was an offspring of Satan. Now you got to understand something. That go to Revelation chapter twelve, because Lucifer was in charge of a third of the angels. Gabriel was in charge of a third, and Michael was in charge of a third. And in Revelation chapter twelve, so we were self birthed right in the throne room, wasn't it? Amen. Revelation chapter twelve, and verse one. Are you there yet? Is everybody okay? This is not science fiction. This is not a dream. This is reality. This is truth and reality. Because the Bible tells us you are not fighting flesh and blood. How many of you know you're all going to die one day? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Who'd want to live here forever? Sheesh. <laughs> Some people are still going, No, I want to live forever right here on earth. Die. Little flesh creature. But I have a family to raise. You won't care when you get home. <laughs> you won't care. Revelation chapter 12. Now a great sign appeared in verse 1 in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a what? Third of the stars representing the Satan's angels. Does everybody understand that? Of the heaven and threw them to the earth or threw them to the atmosphere here. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared for by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. Now, there is a threefold meaning to this. It's talking about something that is to come, and it's talking about Israel. Okay. It's also talking about the church, because it talks about the, the, um, the body of Christ, or, or, or the woman, which is the bride, being taken away by two wings which is a representation of the fullness of the rapture, which is a representation of Moses and Elijah or Moses and Enoch. Are you with me? Those who are dead in Christ were raised and those who are alive will be taken. That's in Thessalonians. <clears throat> but there's another meaning I want to talk about this tonight. Because I want you to look in the Garden of Eden. Are you with me? Okay. And there's another place. 
This also not only represents the church in Israel, but it also represents Eve. See, Eve never had the opportunity to birth the image of God. Does everybody understand this? Because they fell before they could produce an offspring of the image and likeness of God. So here the dragon, the serpent, which who was in the garden, did not want Eve or Adam to produce an offspring in the likeness and character of Christ. Come on, are you with me? Y'all look a little whole. Are you all right? You get it? Oh, hallelujah. How do you know these things? By the Spirit of God. You can't go to school and learn this stuff. You pray in the Holy Ghost and God gives you a revelation knowledge from the throne room. This is not cemetery school. <laughs> this is the school of the Spirit. Preparation for warriors. Taking us to the deep things of God. Exposing the enemy's tactics so you can stay one step ahead of him. Or two or three. Amen. Praise God. Eve never had the opportunity to produce an offspring. Are you with me? In the likeness and image of God. Now go to Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of my Father. I thank you for the angel of revelation, the spirit of revelation. And I thank you that we're all going to have an impartation tonight and understand how to cooperate with the character of Christ. We are talking about the birthing of self. Lucifer is the originator of pride. And he is the father of self. Come on, say it with me. Lucifer is the originator of pride and the father of self. <clears throat> Glory to God. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 and through 28, would you read it with me? Then God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God he created him. Male and female, he created him. In his image. And likeness. Then God blessed them and he said to them, be what? Fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the water, land, air, and sea. Basically, does everybody see that? And over every li living creep. <laughs> Glory to God. And so, what, so here we know that Adam and Eve were made in the image and likeness of God. They were multi-functioning beings. They were eternal beings. Are you getting this? So, by being eternal beings, I do not believe they had blood. Because if they would have tripped and cut themselves, they would have bled to death, wouldn't they? Hello? Why? They had glorified bodies. Why? They were made in the image and likeness of God. When Jesus rose again to the, from the dead, they saw Jesus... And he was like a man, but he had no blood. He was flesh and bone. Why? Because the life of the flesh was in the spirit, not in the blood. That's what Adam and Eve looked like. They were eternal beings. Is everybody with me? Praise God. They were multifunctioning beings, eternal purpose to govern, protect, and maintain God's creation. Coexisting with angelic support. Are you with me? You want me to say that again? Oh, hallelujah. They are multi-functioning beings. They walked and talked with God. They spoke with Him face to face. They had an eternal purpose to govern, protect, and maintain God's creation. Coexisting with angelic support. In fact, if you read in the Scriptures, it said that when God created Adam... He took him and put him in the Garden of Eden in hope that the Garden would spread through the world. Are you okay? Now go to Genesis 3.1. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. And starting at verse 1. Genesis 3, starting at verse 1. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Of course, we just said that he was full of wisdom, wasn't he? He was beautiful, he was perfect, and he was anointed. Of course, he was no longer Lucifer now. He was a serpent. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of the tree of the garden? What did he just do? 
he imparted a corruptible seed. And every time she walked by, he watered it. Hey, psh, come on. You know God's holding something back from you. Come on. If, come on. You, you know there's more. You know, he doesn't want you to be like him. Come on, he kept watering it and watering. See, Lucifer, first of all, does say the serpent does not want you to know who you are. He was trying to move her out of position to negate who she was. Oh, hallelujah. And the woman made the first mistake. She responded. When she responded, she accepted the corruptible seed that was imparted in her. She said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, which is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which one you're hanging from, serpent, God said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Obviously, she knew what death was, but she did not know what lying was. She did not know what sin was, so she would have to speak the truth. Then the serpent responded again to water that wonderful, huge, corruptible seed. And he said to the woman, you will not die. God is a liar. Ding. A light bulb went off in her. Ooh. You mean he's holding something back from me? Hello? You mean he really didn't mean what he said? Then he watered it even more. He started flooding it now. He said, come on, let's put some soil around it, miracle grow and everything else. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Wait a minute. She was like God. She was already in, made in his image and likeness. You couldn't be any more like God. <laughs> You understand? So what was he doing? He was trying to convince her that she wasn't who God said she was. Woo-hoo. And she thought for a minute and said, whoa, wow. And that corruptible seed began to grow. This dude's got a heavy duty point. Because if God's holding something back from me, I got to have it. The first thing that happened was, I got to have it. Hello. So you know what she did? She put her catcher's mitt on and said, throw me one of those. Give me that fruit, man. Give me that fruit. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, desirable to make one wise, pride of life, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Ooh. Oh, when she saw the tree, I'm sorry, that was lust of the eyes, yeah. And then when she ate, it was lust of the flesh. Now listen, verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were open to the natural realm. And they were closed to the spirit realm. They could no longer see God the way they used to see God. Why? Because self was just birth. Lucifer just produced his two first offsprings. Come on, are you with me? Lucifer just produced his first two offsprings by producing self. Hello? Hello? So self was now birth. God can no longer fellowship with sin. Hello? Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were what? Naked. Why? Everything was associated with self now. And they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves coverings comfortable from shame and fear. And they heard. I said they heard. They didn't see God no more. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife, what? They hid themselves. Why? Because Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. Hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord called Adam like and said, where are you? Like he didn't know where he was. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was a what? Afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that? Oh, we have a wonderful teaching about who told you that. That you were naked. Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? That tree of self-righteousness. That tree that produces pride. That tree that produces offsprings of self. And the man said, the woman. Hello. Boy, you know, he was fleshly now. He was associated with protecting himself. What was he do? He was passing it on to the woman. Wait a minute, it wasn't my fault. He was already protecting himself. Why? Because the principalities of Satan, which had now taken over the earth, and the prince of power of air was now run 
the earth had just been turned over to Satan. His principalities, his angels, were now all in place. Does everybody understand this? And the prince of power error just took over. Why? Because they took Adam's office. And Adam and Eve never got the opportunity to have offsprings of children in the image and likeness of God. And what was produced now was an offspring of the father of darkness known as self. Now, now they were blinded to the things of the spirit realm and everything was open to them according to the natural realm, which was now fallen nature. Everything had now fallen, hadn't it? Hello? That's why he's called the prince of power of error. That's why when you bite an apple, it turns brown, doesn't it? Why? Because it's now decaying. That's why you were born now to die. Okay. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? And he said, and, and, and the, the woman, it's her fault, man. <laughs> she gave me the seed, which she really did. See, Adam wasn't there when this was going on. She brought the fruit to him. Now, he was there in the garden, but he wasn't there in front of the tree when the serpent was talking to her. Because the Bible says later on that the woman deceived, the Eve deceived Adam. Now, don't be offended, women, okay? It's, it's okay. What was he trying to do? Why did he not go after Adam? Because Adam was not the birther. Eve was. That's why Ad, the devil always wants to go after your children. He wants to go after them before they're even born. Oh, hallelujah. Are you okay? Good. Now, and the Lord said to the woman, what is this you've done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me. Now, she's passing it on to the serpent. And I ate it. And the Lord said to the serpent, he didn't ask the serpent what you've done. <laughs> he said, because you've done this, you dirty dog, you. You are what? Curse more than all the kettle and more than every beast of the field. And on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Do you understand? It means hatred. So the serpent knew that the Lord was going to send somebody in at some time, but he didn't know when. And he said that he's going to bruise your head. He's going to kick your head. And you're going to bruise his heel. So the serpent knows. Somebody was coming that God was going to send sometime. Now, he wanted to stop that seed from coming in, didn't he? And to the woman, he said, I greatly multiply your sorrow, sorrow and on your conception. In pain, you shall birth forth, bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and, and he shall rule over you. Then Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife. In other words, because the, you allowed the seed to be imparted in you. And have eaten from the tree of which I told you not to eat. Curses the ground for your sake and in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field and in sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground for out of it you are taken for dust you are and dust you shall return. And Adam and his wife name Adam and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Also, Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. So we know that the Lord did the first sacrifice. Amen. The first sacrifice was done in the Garden of Eden because it was life for life. God took an animal, killed it, and covered Adam and Eve. What was he doing that for? So he could restore them the blessing of being fruitful and multiply. But they could not remove the arena that they would live forever. He's because he spoke that in. And God cannot come against his word, can he? He said, if you eat of this, you die. So he couldn't do There wasn't anything God could do about that. But what he could do was restore them to the promise of being fruitful and multiply. But he could not remove that they would die. Are you with me? Okay, good. Now, so he, he killed the first. Then the Lord God said something powerful in verse 22. He said, behold, the man has become like us. To know good and evil. In other words, self has been birthed. And now lest he put his hand out to take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. He said, man, I can't have these people live like this. Therefore the Lord sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed a cherubim at the east of the garden of 
Eden in a flaming sword which turned every way to the garden, the way of the tree of life. So what did he do? He removed them from the tree of life, didn't he? Oh, hallelujah. That's why you need to be born again so you can eat again of the tree of life what was stolen out in the garden. Hello? Are you with me? Is everybody okay? So we see that the corruptible seed was planted. In other words, there was conception, wasn't there? Amen? Then it was watered, and it became birth, and it promoted pride to be like God. Hello? Remember I share with you that the devil always tells you that uh, God is always holding something back from you. So the serpent convinced Eve that she wasn't who God said she was. Self was birth, and the protector is pride. Now listen, this is very powerful because now Adam and Eve became the offspring of darkness, didn't they? You know who their mentor was? Pride. Are you with me? Because they were removed from the tree of life like Lucifer was removed from the throne room of God. So it came down to family line, didn't it? Lucifer was removed from the tree, from the, from the presence of God, and Adam and Eve were removed from the tree of life. Why? Because they just inherited that, didn't they? And the mentor was now pride. And he was pride protects self. Amen? What protects, what protects pride? Fear. And what protects fear? Anger. Self was birthed. Pride is now the mentor of self, mentoring the image of darkness. Pride is associated with the principalities of pride that are used to control self. So the principalities and all the angels are, they are controlling individuals by the spirit of pride. Pride is a high, high powered spirit, which is one of the principalities that reign over cities, nations, and so forth. What are they always doing? They are promoting pride. Are you with me? Remember, pride is the mentor of self. Go to Genesis 6 while we're here. All glory. Okay, so we know now that um, self was uh, birth, right? Was an offspring of darkness. And uh, it, it, now that it, self now has to die. Amen? Because the ate of the tree, it was a, God said, you'll eat of this and you're going to die. So the, the tree of life was now removed. But Lucifer, who was the originator of pride and also walks in fear himself, Realize that God said something very powerful. He said, listen, I'm going to set a, send a seed in that's going to bruise your head and you're going to bruise his heel. So Lucifer did not want to allow a seed in. So he did something very wicked. In, ver in chapter 6 and verse 1. Would you read it with me? Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. That the sons of God, which are angels. Now these are the angels of Satan. Saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. So these principalities, Satan's angels, put on flesh and came into the natural realm and took on themselves wives. Are you with me? Okay. Oh, this is where they get the mythical things of Zeus and all the other stuff. Because these angels had power. Amen. They worshipped them as gods and all kinds of stuff. And there were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Wow. Why? Because when these fall, what we might say fallen angels, but they are angels of Satan, came down to the earth and put on flesh, went into these women, these daughters, they produced offsprings of evil. Some giants and all kinds of stuff. Some of them were beautiful. Why? Because Satan did not want, he wanted to stop every seed that would come into the world because he was afraid one of them would crush his head. Now, you've got to understand something. Here, first of all, from the garden, self was birthed, right? Now you've got wickedness that comes down from heaven, puts on flesh, and becomes one flesh with self. 
Are you with me? Now offsprings are birthed. And God said, listen, man, every intent of everyone now on the earth is evil. Continuously. Why? Because these were now all the offsprings that were birthed. And he said, you know, this kid, I, my spirit can't dwell with this. I'm not going to allow this. Why? The spirit of life. He said, I'm not going to allow this. So when the, when the Lord said, I will, do, uh, and in verse 6, he said, the Lord said, was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Now, what happened? The flood came, didn't it? Amen? But because self, self, self became pregnant with pure evil and produced offsprings. Now, when God killed all man, right, where did their spirits go? They, uh, spirits don't die, do they? This is where demons were produced. Now, well, how did they keep going? And why was there giants and so forth in the, in the Old Testament? Because one of Noah's sons married an offspring and it went, came, came across. You understand that? And we have a teaching on that. But I'm not going into all that tonight. I wanted you to see about this birth. So what was Lucifer trying to do? He was trying to stop the seed from coming in. But God said, that's it. You all dead now. And he killed them all, didn't he? Amen? <laughs> and they are now demons. So they had a body, didn't they? Trying to find one. To look for it. And you could be born with it because of the family line, because of the curses down the family line. And you don't even realize it. That's why he's always after children. That's why you always hear an abduction of children. That's why there's traumas and all the devil and the powers of darkness are always are trying to attack children, aren't they? Oh, hallelujah. Pride's killer, man. Pride is killer. Go to Matthew 10. Are you all right? Oh, to God be the glory. I pray you get this tonight. See, so when you and I were born, we were born in darkness, weren't we? We were born with blinders. We didn't understand the things of the Spirit. The only thing we wanted was me. Everything for me. That's why a baby, what does it say? Mine, mine, mine. It cries for me. You know, and the children start growing up, and what do they say? You go out and buy them something. You say, hey, look at it. That's mine. I mean, you didn't buy that. That's mine anyways. Little flesh creatures. That's all they want is what's for them. To fulfill their what? Flesh. For the purpose of self. Me, myself, and I. Why? Because they're the off self is the offspring of darkness. That's why it must be, be, be born again. Rebirth. So that self is no longer the purpose of life. But he is. Where you become sons of God. And Matthew chapter 10 and in verse 32. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? Good. Let's read it together. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Ooh. So by denying the Lord, right? You're promoting what? Come on, by denying the Lord, you're what? Yourself. Promoting who? Yourself. Self. Hmm. You are promoting self. Go to Matthew 16. Why we're here. In verse 24. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me or imitate me, let him what? Deny himself. And take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life or self will lose it. And whoever is willing to lose his life, self, for my sake, will have life eternal. Does everybody get it? Why? Because God does not fellowship with self. He fellowships with his children. So the spirit of pride is the protector and the mentor of self. So everything that you do, if it's self-oriented, you know you're associating with pride. Because he's the protector. Now I want you to go somewhere else right now. Go to uh, Psalm 23. Now this is powerful because Jesus said, I am the what? Way, truth, and life. He said, nobody comes to the Father except for through me. There is no other way to eternal life except for through Jesus. No other way. So no matter how much you do self, there's no other way. 
only through the Lord, isn't there? In Psalm 23. Oh, glory. Did you get this? Are you getting it? Glory to God. Psalm 23 and verse 1. Would you read it with me? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. I shall not what? I shall not want. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, it's no longer your wants. It's his wants. Why? Because he's your shepherd. You have a relationship with him now that you know everything's going to be taken care of. You have a trust in him that everything's going to be taken care of, no matter what it is. See, but fear will try to move you away. Pride, which will mentor self, will say, listen, man, you can't wait on God. You better do it. Pride will never allow you to wait. Pride is the pusher, and the spirit is the leader. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not want. The Bible says that we're to be in a position where uh, we get into a place where our desires are no longer controlling us. You know, too many people who are led by emotions are the most dangerous people there are. They are led by their feeling. They're the most dangerous people there are. Why? Because it's associated in that arena of self. Because they're always led by how I feel. Me, 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 self. They're led by how they feel. I feel this. I feel that. I feel this. And they're always led in every direction. Well, I feel this way. I think I'm, I feel I feel like I should do it. I feel, I, I feel too many eyes. Ay, 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 ay. They're the most dangerous people there are because you don't know what they're going to do next. They'll shake hands with you and say, hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, brother, sister, glory to God. Give me a high five, low five, and side five. But you know, the mentor is there mentoring self. See, pride blinds an individual to discern. The two fruits of pride is rebellion and betrayal. Anybody that's associated with you know eventually is going to betray you unless they get delivered. Why? Because they're led by their feelings so much. You know that they can't be led by truth because the offspring of, of Satan, who is self, is after everybody else to destroy, kill, and steal. So when you know somebody that's associated with self all the time with emotions, well, I feel it. Whew, you better be careful because that person is going to betray you. Hello? And they're associated with rebellion, which is witchcraft, and the spirit of pride was the mentor of self and the protector of self. Are you with me? It makes promises and never can complete them. It can't keep them because there's always something of self Getting in the way. And then every time it makes a promise, which is a covenant, and it can't fulfill it, it brings a self-imposed curse. So it's got a backyard, a storehouse of curses that can't just shake it. No matter how many hours, it works. No matter how many, how many things, it still can never outrun the warehouse of curses. Because the devil still has access to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, hallelujah. Are you right? Proverbs 16. Glory! Proverbs 16. Cooperating with the character of Christ, you got to deny yourself and get rid of the spirit of pride. Put on the cloak of humility. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 16 and verse 17. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride goes before what? Destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. I can do it. Yeah, I feel it. Bummer. (laughs) Better to be a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Go to Proverbs 6. (laughs) 6, 6.16. It says, six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. The first one, he says, is a proud look. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that deceives, devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and the one who sows discord among brethren. Wow. Why are those things manifesting? Because it's trying to promote self. My flesh is bigger than yours. Hello? People get in in discussions and arguments. That's all they're doing is taking heed to the voice of the stranger. And and the devil's getting fed. He's sitting there with his... uh, 
uh, what do you call it, a bib, with a bib, a knife and fork, and he sits between two people that are yelling at one another, oh, oh, oh. and he's getting bigger and bigger, and then Mr. Pride's getting puffed up, then they start quoting scriptures to one another. <laughs> yeah, well, the word says this, and the word, yeah, well, you can't even want the word. person's got a demon of pride. Pride blinds the eyes to discern what is right. They can't make the correct choice. Hello? They call good evil and evil good because they can't discern. They can't see beyond themselves. It's like, don't get in my territory. That's mine. Don't step over that line. That's mine. Put down that book. That's mine. Mine, 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 mine. Sounds like a Kawasaki. Mine, 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 mine. <laughs> Praise God. Go to First Peter 5. You know what a Harley sounds like? Come out, come out, come out, come out. <laughs> Kawasaki's mine, 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 mine. <laughs> and a Harley's come out, come out, come out. <laughs> Aren't you glad we're not religious? In First Peter chapter five, glory to God. <laughs> so next time you get next to a Harley, you know, just cooperate with it and say, "Come out." Next time you get next to a Kawasaki, rebuke it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah! <laughs> First Peter chapter five and verse five. Oh, praise you, Lord! Thank you, Jesus. Are, are, are you getting this tonight? I'm telling you, it's so important that you begin to discern these things because these are things that move you right out of position of receiving God's revelation. It's not so important. People are more concerned about the blessing. Forget the blessing. I want the revelation because I'm not a server. Of, I'm not a servant of the blessing. I'm a servant of the revelator. Oh, hallelujah. People are trying to get revelation to get a blessing. I want revelation to get closer. I want revelation to expand the kingdom of God and expose the enemy's tactics in people's lives. Oh, praise you, Master. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit. Oh, hallelujah. Submit yourselves to your elders. Yeah, well, you know what? That person is younger than me. and You want me to submit to them? Yes, what do you mean? Because God placed them in the position and you submit to God's authority or you have none. God does not look at age. Elders are not about age. Hello? There are elders that are in their 20s. It's got nothing to do with age. It's about who God places where. People are so caught up in self. I can't submit to that young little whippersnapper. I know more than him. I've been through six cemetery schools. I can quote the scripture and remember every page, but I can't cut loose of the dope, the lust, the sex, perversion, and a perverse mouth. Yeah, you deserve that position, don't you? You prideful flesh creature, you. Oh, hallelujah. Likewise, you younger people, submit, to your, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. We get people coming in our discipleship house, fresh out of corrections. They want to have a meeting with me sometimes. You know, Pastor, I really think you need to, I know God sent me here to help you change the program. It's not a program. Oh, believe me, they come in all kinds of characters. God sent us to die. Hello? Yes, but I need a position right away so somebody will recognize me. Come on, I got all this knowledge. I got to be somewhere. Oh, you little flesh creature. You got all that knowledge and nothing to give because you can't walk what you talk because that your mentor is from beneath and he's a promoter of self. Are you with me? Therefore, humble yourselves under a mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, not you exalt you. Cast in your care on him, for he cares for you. No, it's okay. I'll take care of it. I think I'll just, uh, I know I'm supposed to cast this on you, Lord, but I, I really can't wait any longer. I think I'll just go take care of this right now. 
you know, Lord, I, uh, you know, that tithe four weeks ago, I, I'm going to make it up. Well, pride says you're going to do it your way. And the Lord says, give me your first fruits. Well, I got paid uh, four weeks ago, but I got stuff to do it. I'll make it up. No. He says, give me your first fruits, you little prideful thing, you. Why? Because now you're trusting in you and not him. And you bring a curse on yourself. Come on, are you with me? Oh, hallelujah. Cast your cares upon him. Cast your concerns, your worries, your, your jobs, everything upon him. Cast your child support upon him. Cast everything upon him. Hello. Cast it upon him. He'll make the way. He'll show you where you need to go and what you need to do. First, you got to die. Get rid of the spirit of pride. Quit trying to fix things in your own flesh. They'd always come back and put you back in the cycle again. And let be God and become his child. And give him what's due to him. Praise, worship, tithe, honor, and respect, obedience, and submission. It says, verse 8, be sober. Hello, what prevents you from being sober? The spirit of pride. Why? Because it blinds you, doesn't it? You can't discern what great, right choice to make. You're too busy making choices according to how you feel and not what the truth is. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. Oh, hallelujah. People become self-righteous with pride. They always want a reward now for what they've done good. I need to be rewarded right now. Oh, you know, I've been doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Why, why isn't this happening yet? Who told you it wasn't? Well, I don't feel it. Well, who said you got to feel it? Can't you believe it? Oh, hallelujah. We better go to another verse. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Sure got hot in here. Come on now. In verse 1, would you all read? Is everybody okay? Are you blessed? Are you dead? You better repent. Come on, you're thinking as soon as you leave here, how are you going to do it your way? <laughs> the only place you get it your way is at Burger King. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. Do you know where we're there? For men will be lovers of who? Ooh. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of religion or godliness, but denying its power from such people, what? Turn away. For this sort of those who creep into households and ministries, they make captives of men and women, load them down with sins and lusts and various lusts. They're always learning but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. In other words, they're always learning, but they can't practice it or apply it and put it to their life. These are spirits of religion controlled by pride. Come on. These are religious spirits. They have a form of godliness, but there is no power. The only thing that they do is they get more knowledge, 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 but they can't get free because they're bound by religion. Pride is actually taking the word of God and mentoring them. Because if the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, that's mentoring them, they would be free. Because truth sets you free. But pride mentors them. Why? Because they're getting knowledge to puff oneself up. That's why what one of the things we want to always teach people is when you are being taught within you, you always want to be able to put it in an area where what I'm getting, how can I teach it? And whatever I'm getting, how can I teach it? Whatever I'm getting, how can I teach it? Amen? And if you're not applying it, then pride is preventing you from using it. That's all it's being used for is to promote self by quoting scriptures and all kinds of stuff. But can't lay hands on the sick, can't cast out the devil, especially the ones that are in you. Don't get revelation knowledge. Struggling, tormented, going to and fro, from job to job to job, from relationship to relationship from relationship, from booze to weed to crack, whatever it is. Why? Because it's a promoter of self. Can't submit. It's a demon. And the soul tie is Satan. Does you understand that? Why? Because it comes down that family line. Oh, hallelujah. 
Go to Psalm 50. Are you okay? Psalm 50. Glory. Hallelujah. Verse 16. 50, 16. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? Well, you'll be challenged on that. <laughs> Pride will say, I'm only willing to do so much. But humbleness will say, Lord, I trust you. I'll do whatever it takes. My hope is in you, not me. Psalm 50, verse 16. Read it with me. But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth? This is that religious spirit. Seeing you hate what? Instruction or counsel or correction. Does everybody understand that? And cast my words before you. Oh, you quoter of scripture. But yet you can't walk it. When you saw a thief, you consented with him and have been a partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil. In other words, no control over the mouth. And your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and I have I kept silent. You thought I was altogether like you. But I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. That is powerful. Hallelujah. Romans 12. Oh, praise God. Are you all right? You getting it? Oh, good. I can smell it tonight. There is a sweet aroma going up to the Lord tonight. <laughs> Glory to God. I believe that there's been a fear of God being imparted and a revelation of the mentor of darkness being exposed. Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsibility. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you're to prove God's will, aren't you? By doing what? Walking according to his will. Cooperating with the character of Christ will prove the will of God. I'm going to go another place here before we close. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Matthew 26 and verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. Is everybody there? And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. See, this needs to be said more often. See, your people fight for their life, but you gave your life to Jesus, so you don't have one. If you still continue to fight for your life, then you associate with the mentor of pride. And he will lead you in a path and a journey of deception. And you'll never get that full breakthrough that you need. Jesus prayed this three times. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass me by. But not my will, your will. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? Are you willing to do the will of God in every decision? Are you willing to learn how to fight? Are you willing to give God your best? To defeat the power of pride. Pride is a spirit. He is a strong spirit. He's a mentor and a sister of birthing offsprings of darkness. He's a protector. He'll do everything he can to prevent you from knowing who you are and denying yourself. Pride. Pride is associated with perfection. He's an accuser of the brethren. He's involved in competition. He's a mocker. He is stubborn and self-righteous. He loves to gossip and plant cancer seeds. He coarse jests and is boastful. Sarcastic and critical. He's a liar and holds unforgiveness. He covetous and he promotes jealousy. He's a motor mouth that can't shut up because he's so busy promoting himself. Pride. Pride rejects faith. 
Well, everyone say that with me. Pride rejects faith. And I want to close at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. Pride is inherited. It's not an event or something that you did. It is inherited. You are born with it. He is the mentor of self, ready for you at all times. Sit down ready. He is a haughty spirit. He will promote the will of darkness and reject the will of God. Pride. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Iniquity is inherited sin. What's he saying? Break the curse off. Break it off. It's an inherited curse. A demon is a messenger of the curse. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and clay, some for honor and dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, if anyone's willing to take the authority and break those curses that you've inherited, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also useful loss, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but avoid foolish and arrogant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been captive by him to do his will. Pride is inherited. Every area of your life where there's association of pride, you must repent. Then you must break the curse. Okay, well, where did pride come from? Like we know it came from the, actually, self was promoted, right? In the throne room, self was birthed, and then pride was established. So we know that from Adam and Eve, offsprings produced self. We go all the way back to our ancestors, all the way back to Satan, because he was the father of self. And then things became down the family line. So it's our responsibility to repent. Are you with me? For associating and agreeing with the spirit of pride and all of its associates. To break the curse off of our life and repent for our forefathers. And loose ourselves from the soul ties of our past that have brought the curse down our line. And put a bloodline of Jesus Christ between yourself and that spirit, commanding that spirit to leave you. And ask God to anoint your spirit to be strong, your soul to be renewed, and your flesh to be crucified. Crucifying and mortifying your flesh and putting self back on the cross where it belongs. In the name of Jesus. Are you with me? Cooperating with the character of Christ means denying yourself and beginning to release yourself from these prideful issues. Repent for those things where you've uh, manipulated. Repent for those areas where you've planted corruptible seeds yourself in pride. Repent for touching and agreeing with the voice of the stranger of pride and being mentored, puffing self up by knowledge, but not able to walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said he was in Christ as a new creation. You can't become a new creation if you're not cooperating with the character of Christ. You will still do old things. You'll get all kinds of knowledge and never progress. Pride is a killer. It's a promoter of sickness and disease. It's a promoter of jealousy and rage and wrath. It's a promoter of murder. It'll do everything it can to protect self. And it associates with fear. We must learn these things because things are not going to get better. They're going to get, worse. Going to get worse. We must come to a place where we're willing to do whatever it takes to be loosed from these things and learn how to war against them so they don't come back again. Because, see, they will come back, but learn how to not agree with them. Amen? They love to promote material. Remember when Satan tempted Jesus, he said, man, look around here. You can have all of this stuff. Just worship me. You can have this brand new car, this computer, this nice house. You can have all of these things. Pride is always afraid to release material. Are you willing? Release yourself from this prideful, demonic spirit. 
that is the number one killer in this country. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We are honored and blessed. And I pray tonight, Lord, as I apply the blood of Jesus on this seed that will grow and bear fruit for your glory, that you'd grant your people wisdom and knowledge and understanding, boldness to say yes to you, Lord, and the authority to sever and cooperate. Lord, we commit all things to you. And Lord, as your people begin to write up this list of associations with pride and soul ties, with manipulation and lying. Lord, bring to remembrance those places in any area where they have promoted pride, in any area where pride has been promoted not only through them, but corruptible seeds have been planted by them. Lord, we desire to expose this demonic force and the spirit and sever ourselves from the character of darkness that the character of Christ can be manifested in us. And we promise to give you all the glory. In Jesus name.